Welcome back to Midweek Politics. David Pakman here with you. Please visit our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash midweekpolitics. Let's talk about health insurance. The Senate Finance Committee has approved health care reform, so to speak, 14 to 9. This is the same Senate Finance Committee that said if we take out gun deaths and car accidents from our health care statistics, the U.S. is doing really well. And that approved $50 million for abstinence-only sex education that anyone even remotely competent understands just doesn't work. The bill would dramatically reorganize the nation's system of health care and health insurance and is being called as the foundation on which Democrats hope to build a strong reform package with little GOP support. The thing is, it doesn't include a public option. So not only is the discussion of, of a single payer completely on the back burner, there's not even a public option here, which to me is nothing short of an embarrassment given 60 senators in the Senate. And I get it. It has to pass the committee first. Uh, Senator Olympia Snow, who's a Republican from Maine, was the only Republican to support the package. Her vote today is her vote today, she says. It doesn't forecast what my vote will be tomorrow, she said, although her vote does keep her at the negotiating table and at the center of the health care reform debate. She risked marginalizing herself with a no vote, is what some articles are saying. She's the only Republican on the committee who supported adva advancing the finance panel bill. And this means that um, a government run plan might eventually come in and in, come into play. Snow told CBS that she believes a public option would give the government a disproportionate advantage over private insurers and that said she opposes the concept. The government would have a disproportionate advantage over insurers. What about the fact that people are at a disproportionate advantage for getting health insurance? That's where the disadvantage is between the price, restrictions due to pre-existing conditions, limitations on coverage, and it essentially being a complete game and a complete uh, shot in the dark, knowing whether, whether your condition is going to be covered or not, the government may be at a disadvantage. The citizens are the ones who are at a complete disadvantage. Let's at least level the playing field for them before we worry about the government being at a slight at, at a slight advantage how i don't even understand how that's coming right. into the equation i mean god forbid we should harm the uh harm the business of these uh insurance companies right well, hey, i'm not into i'm for I, i'm for capitalism and i'm for you know everything's everything's great let's make money let's have insurance companies if the market wants them so on and so forth but let's not create a, a disproportionate situation where people are at a disadvantage let's not have a situation where people are at the mercy of the insurance companies That's and exactly the insurance right. companies have are, you know, omnipotent. Uh, absolutely. I don't want it to sound like I'm against companies being able to run their business like these insurance companies. What I am against is people being at a disadvantage. And that's where they are right now between losing coverage for switching jobs, not being able to afford coverage, not having coverage that's too expensive and doesn't even really cover you, uh, having no coverage at all, not qualifying, qualifying Medicare, Medicare. It's just, it's a complete mess. People, are at a complete disadvantage here. Let's level the playing field for them. Now, will Olympia Snow lose out because of this vote? She's risking a shot at becoming the top Republican on the Senate committee by backing Democratic health care legislation, according to senators on the panel. A vote for health care would be something that would weigh on our minds when it came time to vote, said a Republican on Commerce, who said Snow would otherwise be assured of the ranking member post if not for the health care debate. What does she have to say about why she voted for the bill? Let's take a listen. So is this bill all that I would want? Far from it. Is it all that it can be? No. But when history calls, history calls. Well, it would be truly sad if, if because of voting in favor of this in the, in, the, in the committee, Olympia Snow were to suffer political repercussions. It's, it's becoming a situation that is so highly politicized that we can't even see the logic of it. It's becoming, it's, it's gone well beyond the logic of, of reason. Oh, I'm sure there are other, uh, you know, Republican, I'm sure there are Republican senators who, uh, who would oppose any bill just so that they can get reelected, you know? Sure, absolutely. And not only that, we have Max Baucus, as we mentioned last week, the, the point person on health care for the country at this point, being the top recipient of 
campaign contributions from insurers, healthcare companies, and pharmaceutical companies. Barack Obama says this does get us, and sometimes we have to wonder who exactly is the us he's talking about, closer to achieving the objectives he laid out. Just seems those objectives are getting really watered down. Let's take a listen to to Barack Obama on this. On this, and we have a lot of difficult work ahead of us. There's still significant details and disagreements to be worked out over the next several weeks as the five separate bills from the Senate and the House are merged into one proposal. But I do believe the work of the Senate Finance Committee has brought us significantly closer to achieving the core objectives I laid out early in September. I don't, I don't know. I'm not convinced of that. I don't know. And, he, and Barack Obama specifically mentioned Senator Olympia Snow for her role in, in this whatever we're calling this. I want to particularly thank Senator Olympia Snow for both the political courage and the seriousness of purpose that she's demonstrated throughout this process. Okay, and then he also added in talking about the how affordable is this reform that this bill wouldn't add a penny to the deficit. It also would have no public option, no shot at single payer, and it's missing so many other fundamental things that I think are needed at this point if we're going to actually call it reform versus political posturing. But hey, it won't add a penny to our deficit if you listen to Barack Obama. Most importantly, this bill goes a long way towards offering security to those who have insurance and affordable options for those who don't. It reins in some of the worst practices of the insurance industry, like the denial of coverage due to pre-existing conditions. It also sets up an insurance exchange that will make coverage affordable for those who don't currently have it. It will slow the growth of health care costs in the long term, and it will not add a penny to our deficit. Well, this insurance exchange, without a public option, Lewis, I'm not convinced it's completely different from what John McCain was suggesting on health care, which is let's let people buy their health care. Let's forget about employer provided health care. We'll put it out into the open market. Without a public option, I think we're in big trouble here with this with this exchange, this insurance exchange. No doubt. 